Combat engineers burdened with heavy packs of explosives must often move up with assault troops under enemy fire to destroy anti-tank obstacles and other barriers. For their protection, an armored work vehicle has been devised in which, buttoned up, the engineers can bring forward explosives and even, without exposing the men, place and fire them. The engineer armored vehicle is a converted medium tank. Its construction and uses are described in War Department Training Circular number 46. During extensive tests made in Florida, both M4A1 and M4A3 tanks were converted for engineer use. The M4A3, because of its greater power and more dependable clutch, is the recommended model. Briefly and broadly, these are the modifications made to a medium tank in converting it to an engineer armored vehicle. First, the 75 millimeter gun shield is removed and restored with a gun plug replacing the tube and a trunnion arm welded to the gun shield. Openings are cut and doors installed on both sides of the hull. Handrails for hand holds and lashing on supplies are welded back of the turret, around the sides and across the rear. The basic vehicle ready for its job is completed with the addition of a rear step to carry extra men. And a wide vision periscope in the driver's hatch cover. However, a dozer blade generally is added. This expands tremendously the vehicle's field of operation. For special missions, a rocket launcher can be installed on the turret. A kit has been assembled containing all the necessary materials for making the conversion in the field. The shop truck and arc welding set, organic equipment of the engineer combat battalion, are used in this process. You'll see these items from the kit put to use as the conversion is made. Preliminary tests demonstrated that practically all the tank's combat features would have to be discarded in order to make room in the hull for the demolition crew and cargo of explosives. Not only the 75 millimeter gun tube and breech, but also other parts of the gun mounting which take up space in the turret. Both recoil cylinders are among the parts removed. The cradle tube is burned off the gun cradle. From the kit comes a gun plug with steel rod and plate attached, which covers the hole left by the discarded gun tube. The plug is two and one quarter inches thick and is pulled tightly against the rotor shield. A short length of pipe, which acts as a guide for welding on the trunnion arm, is tack welded to the gun plug. After it has served its purpose, it is removed. The trunnion arm, also furnished in the kit, is one of the fittings for installing the rocket launcher. Before being welded to the rotor shield, it is cut down to conform to the length of the rotor shield projection. Thus, the rocket launcher, when attached to the trunnion arm, uses the elevating mechanism of the 75 millimeter gun. Modified for the work vehicle, the gun assembly is put back. Ammunition racks and boxes have been cleared from the turret. The coaxially mounted 30 caliber machine gun is retained for anti-personnel use. Traversing mechanism also remains unchanged. The turret can traverse its full 360 degrees. Out of the kit now comes the template for the door opening. On it are scribed eight holes which outline the door and two holes for the latch block. These locations are center punched into the hull.
A dead man, tack welded on at the center of the door outline, supplies the base from which a wooden arm puts pressure on the drill. These holes drilled through the hull expedite the work of the burning torch. To avoid damage inside the hull, a spark box is tack welded in place there. After the outline of door opening and latch block have been scribed on the hull, the steel guide bar from the kit is tack welded on and the cutting of the door opening begins. When the straight lines have been cut, an improvised radius arm on the torch cuts the corner segment. Port and starboard doors with their frames come with the kit. In a test, 30 caliber machine gun bullets were fired at the door cracks without damaging them or admitting bullet splash. Grinding down the rough edges finishes the job on the door. A latch on the inner side of the door fits tightly into the latch block. Cutting openings through the turret basket permits free use of the doors. A rear step is welded to the vehicle. Handrails are installed behind the turret and along the sides and rear. Tests demonstrate their usefulness in carrying extra personnel. Three men lie on the sloping back of the vehicle, holding to the rails, and three men crouch on the rear step. By taking cover behind the armored vehicle's front profile, the men are protected from direct frontal fire, and they're not too prominent a target, even from a side angle. The vehicle has a crew of six, driver, assistant driver, and four demolition men. A wooden platform, which may be improvised in the field, makes it easier for the demolition crew to enter and leave the vehicle quickly. The demolition crew enter feet first and exit head first, with a grip on the handrail going in and coming out. In all tests, use of the Lucite wide-angle periscope enabled the vehicle to operate efficiently even when buttoned up. Contrast the narrow angle of the old periscope with the wide-angle vision of the new one. Now we have the basic engineer armored vehicle converted from the medium tank. Tests to enlarge its usefulness were made with special items of equipment. First, the dozer blade, mounted as on the tank dozer. Tested against concrete cylinders, the tank dozer cleared a path in a matter of minutes. It was also used effectively in filling in anti-tank ditches and ramping over obstacles. Another test demonstrated the dozer blade's usefulness in knocking out a Japanese-type log pillbox. Here, the M8 armored trailer is being used to bring a supply of explosives up to two armored vehicles. The pintle tow hitch, furnished with the trailer, remains on the armored vehicle for later use. 1,000 pounds of 18-pound packs of Composition C2 or of 21-pound packs of Tetratol can be stowed on the turret basket floor of each vehicle, with plenty of room left for the four-man demolition crew. There is space for an additional 1,000 pounds under the turret basket floor plates and on the right sponson, where rods 3 8 inch thick are welded so the explosives can be lashed in place. 
For hauling extra supplies into forward areas behind the armored vehicle, a four by eight foot toboggan type trailer was constructed. The pallet has a rugged wooden frame, a double floor and towing cable. Bands of one eighth inch strap iron provide runners. 74 packs or 1,332 pounds of C2 can be loaded on the pallet. They must be tightly packed to stand rough going. Open spaces are filled in with wedges of one inch boards. In preparation for the test runs, four by fours were nailed on all sides to ensure a firm, compact load. Contrasted with the M8 armored trailer's 52 and one quarter inch height, the pallet with load has a 14 inch silhouette. In all tests, the pallet stood up well, riding over rough ground and fallen trees, sometimes at an angle of 45 degrees without overturning. Another accessory tested with the armored vehicle was the 81 millimeter mortar. It is installed on two brackets, so placed that the mortar's bore and the gunner's periscope are parallel. When ready for action, the turret hatch cover is opened and the mortar raised into firing position. Before installation, the base plate is cut down to six and three quarters by eight inches. The mortar elevates on its own and is traversed by movement of the gun turret. Most of the smoke shells were fired without powder increments and ranges as short as 50 yards obtained. Time of flight was between 11 and 12 seconds. The M17 multiple rocket launcher, an effective weapon for blasting gaps in concrete and steel obstacles, holds 20 7.2 inch rockets, which can be rippled off or fired singly. Here, demolition rockets were used to blast a gap in a six by eight lightly reinforced concrete wall. 15 rockets were fired at a range of 100 feet. For only 477 and one half pounds of explosives did this job. Now, using smoke rockets, the launcher is mounted on the armored vehicle. traverses on the turret and, being connected to the trunnion arm, uses the 75 millimeter gun elevating mechanism. A thick smoke screen was successfully laid around the area in which the demolition crew was to work. The rocket launcher, here mounted on a tank, may be hydraulically jettisoned from inside the vehicle. In previous tests with one vehicle, the four-man demolition crew hand-placed a thousand-pound wall charge in between three and four minutes. Two vehicles were then assigned to hand-place a 1,500-pound wall charge. By working between the vehicles, the men are protected from flanking fire. One man inside each vehicle passes out 750 pounds of explosives. Two empty explosives boxes and a 10-foot board elevate the charge about two feet. Detonating assemblies are tied on.
Fuse lighters are pulled with 60 seconds to get safely away. The two vehicles placed that 1,500 pound charge in the same time it took one vehicle to place a 1,000 pound charge, in from three to four minutes. Another method tested was the dozer placed wall charge. Here is the frame of the steel dozer, which can be built in the field from small, lightweight channels and angle iron. The rack in which the explosives are stacked is suspended from the channel arms of the frame. And the frame is hooked over the top of the dozer blade. The Dozit has a capacity of from 1,000 to 1,500 pounds of explosives. Each pair of packages is lashed to the rack. Two detonating assemblies are securely taped to the rack and pull wires tied to the dozer frame. Then the second row of explosives is lashed in place. Feelers, thin wooden strips, are taped on. When they strike the wall, the buttoned up driver will lower the blade and so drop off the dozer. Because the explosives on the dozer are exposed to enemy fire, two other vehicles or tanks may shield the load up to the wall. When the blade is lowered, the Dusit's feet strike the ground and, unhooked from the blade, the load swings against the wall. It took three or four seconds to place that Dusit charge, and the crew was inside the tank all the time. With the gap blown clear, the armored vehicle is there with the dozer blade to improve it. The dozer's load may also be exploded electrically from inside the buttoned up vehicle. In this manner, two firing methods are provided to ensure detonation of the charge. And there she is, the engineer armored vehicle, with demolition crew and cargo of explosives buttoned up for frontline work. <laughs>